Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about rigid body physics uh, for 2D games inside of Unity, how they worked, and why I ended up switching from kinematic to rigid body recently for my 2D game character. So for any character that has a rigid body 2D component attached to it, the rigid body 2D is there so that the character can collide with other objects. Now there's three different modes for those rigid body 2Ds. If we click on the body type drop down, you can see static used for objects that aren't really going to move. Things like the ground that may exist as an object that a character can collide into, but themselves do not move. So the ground is perfect for that because you'd run into the wall, but you wouldn't move the wall generally. And then we have kinematic mode where you would generally move the character using a rigid body dot move position call. And in kinematic mode, it's going to be essentially teleporting the character between its last position from the previous frame and the new position that you're updating it to. Now, because it's teleporting from one place to the other, you have to manually check in your code if it is going to collide into another object when it gets to that point. Otherwise, you'll end up with characters stuck in the walls, stuck on the corners, or in many other places that you don't actually intend for it to end up at. The advantage of having it in kinematic mode is that you can make the movement really simple and just ignore uh, the default physics of Unity 2D. So if you want a character to not be affected by gravity or you want it to move in a path that doesn't really make sense under normal physics, then kinematic might make sense. And then we have dynamic mode where it takes full advantage of the Unity physics engine. So instead of moving the position directly, you actually apply forces to the rigid body. So that might mean uh, apply a force of 500 units to the right and then the character would move to the right. But the exact position that it would end up at gets calculated by Unity. So in a sense, unless you have a reason to use kinematic mode, just having it in dynamic mode and applying forces saves you a lot of time. You don't really need to worry as much about the detailed calculations. So let's go ahead and enter play mode and I can show you some of what I'm talking about and then I'll quickly touch on my code. You can see that in my animation controller, I am setting X move and Y move variables. And then those variables are being used to update the position of our character. Now, uh, for empty spaces like this, it works just fine. So like moving left and right is really easy. The problem is that when you run into areas that have potentially a little bit weird collisions, uh, that you need to do extra work in order to make those happen right. So for instance, uh, in your code, you have to make sure using collision overchecks or raycasts that as you walk into areas like walls or corners that you're not going to accidentally teleport inside of those colliders. So if that happens where you move position and you didn't properly check for the collision here, then you can easily end up with a character stuck in the wall. So when you're using dynamic mode, uh, what will happen is that you apply the force to it and the rigid body will already detect that moving the character into there would uh, overlap the colliders. And instead of teleporting into the wall, it'll just move or slide along the wall or just stop at the wall, depending on the exact angle of the movement. So one of the problems I was having with kinematic mode is that when it comes to these little corners, the code can be a little bit tricky. It's quite easy to get stuck there. I'll see if I can do it right here. So for instance, like right here, uh, you just run into these extra little situations where it should be going down but you have to code all of the movements just right. So in this case, I can let go and the X movement won't apply there. Um, and that would be fixable. But I think I just kind of found it a little bit frustrating to deal with this. And in a sense, it's like, why worry about these kind of issues when the dynamic body type solves those already for you? Okay, so just to show a uh, kinematic movement in code, you can see your RB rigid body, move position. So you're literally teleporting the character into the new location. So before you move the position of the character, you have to do a bunch of code for collider checks. So making sure that if you were to move into this position, you wouldn't actually collide with anything. Or if you did collide with something, how are you going to solve that? So part of the kinematic code I was working on was that if a, a collision is detected for trying to move into that new point, uh, the point you're trying to teleport into, to figure out the distance between where the character's at currently and the point at which the collision would happen. And by reducing the distance to that, you can basically move the distance up to the collision rather than teleporting inside of the wall. So that was good and that helps. 
but then there are still some weird issues like where you're on the corner and your character isn't quite falling off the edge but it's also not staying on the ground properly or it gets stuck in the ground it can't jump that kind of thing uh, so I was trying to write some corner push code for that, but then I just kind of realized that um, basically if I just put the character in dynamic mode, I don't have to actually write that because a rigid body in dynamic mode, if forces are acting on it, it'll already calculate the final move that it needs to go to, uh, depending on whatever colliders you're running into. So yeah, going back into kinematic mode, we can run into those little issues here on the corner. It might your character might get stuck there and that all is technically solvable but so now switching over to a character in dynamic mode you can see that i switched to a capsule collider here and on the edges where you might have some corner issues uh, the forces will just kind of automatically push the character off by itself so i'll go into play mode and with this capsule collider as we get to the edge it's just going to kind of push the character off by itself uh, just from the nature of how the gravity is acting upon the character. Oh, and that's another thing. The uh, gravity in uh, edit project settings and then physics 2D. This applies to dynamic rigid bodies by default. Uh, you can still take that variable or anything else you want to set up for the kinematic gravity. But this will apply automatically so you don't even need to worry about the gravity as long as your gravity scale is turned on. So in this case you can see that I set the gravity scale for this character on 3 and I increased the linear drag dramatically. Um, that was just to give it more of the feel I was looking for. So in this case, changing the numbers, you can still get a character to fall at the rate you want it to and the linear drag uh, more for making the character stop at the right time. So if I didn't have a high linear drag like this, the character would be floating around much more kind of like ice skating. There's also 2D physics materials here, which sound more complicated than they are. But if I open one up, you can see that there's friction and bounciness settings. So the friction here uh, also helps to slow down the character as I stop giving it a movement input, um, as you can see there. And then you can also set bounciness on a physics material if you want a character or let's say a ball to bounce on the ground a bunch of times before it actually comes to a final stop. Uh, but yeah, in general, I'm just finding that having it set to dynamic mode actually solves a lot of the problems that you'd probably run into making a kinematic controller anyway. So here's the thing though, you may want an object that ignores the default physics but still moves and in that case you would want to put it in kinematic mode. So a really good example that I was thinking for kinematic bodies would actually be for moving platforms. So a platform that moves in a platform a game. But if you were to run into the platform or a giant object fell from the sky onto the platform, you probably wouldn't want it to actually move the platform, knock it out of the way or change its path in any way. So in that case, you can still set the body type for objects like that to kinematic where they can still move, but how it moves is completely defined by you. But if you just want standard physics for a character, then you can just put it in dynamic mode, play around with the numbers, and the coding is going to be simpler for that and probably work better in the end as well. And so if you're curious about the dynamic player input, I can go ahead and edit the script here. So with a dynamic rigid body, you only need to figure out how much force you want to add to the object, but you don't need to calculate the collisions as if it was teleporting between point A and B because that's what the Unity physics engine does for you. So in that sense, you end up having to write a lot less code. You can see the kinematic script quite a bit more complicated and it's still flawed. So that's why I'm gonna be using a dynamic rigid body for my platform and character, unless I come up with a real good reason to switch back. Okay, so just before I wrap up the video, in case you're wondering where I'm getting those force values from, uh, for both kinematic mode and dynamic mode, it's basically the same. So you can see here in my animation controller for the ground script and really I have one of these attached to basically any way I want it to be able to move horizontally left and right. If I pop open the script it's really simple. I have a value for how much force should be applied to the character uh, modified by time delta time of course. And then basically I just look at the x input and whether or not it's trying to move left or right. Then if so, I set the float of the move to this movement force amount and uh, positive or negative depending on if it's left or right, of course. Uh, otherwise, setting it to zero so the character wouldn't have any extra forces out and onto it. So back in the dynamic player import script, you can see that in order to make the move, 
uh, basically adding those forces to the rigid body. I just get the values from the animation controller scripts. So the X move, as I showed before, comes from horizontal movement behavior. And then other values like Y impulse just comes from jump scripts. So basically all of the forces applied at once in that case. And those just get added to the rigid body and I let the rigid body calculate everything else. Like if it's running into a wall, don't teleport into that wall. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much rigid bodies for 2D game characters inside of Unity. So I hope that this clears up any of the confusion that there may have been about uh, kinematic mode versus dynamic rigid body mode. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.